So I come from INRS, which stands for Institut National de la Recherche Scientifique. We have three centers located at uh, Montreal, and one is at Quebec City, where I'm working, which the center deals with water, earth, and environment. And what do I do? The next slide, I think it should come up soon. I actually, this is my research team, they were waiting to have the party, Christmas party. But me, I go beyond this. I have the taste in waste at the source on these agricultural waste, as well as the contaminants which could be present, especially in the containers that contain these foods. And uh, I work on two research themes. First research theme is on bioprocessing, as you can see here. So we go all the way down from the test tube to the final product, which could be applied in the field. And, the, uh, and also at the same time as we are dealing with waste, since I said taste in waste, so it's very important, the contaminant part. As you can see in this cartoon, the waitress is asking for the prescription for a glass of water to the customer because uh, uh, we need to know the emerging contaminants which are present in these waste, especially at concentrations of nano and picogram per liters. So this is the second research theme which I deal with. Now I start with bioprocessing. Uh, here in Canada, municipal wastewater uh, solids or sludges as they are called, are mostly landfilled, incinerated, and only a small part goes to the agricultural application. So me, I go beyond this, that is going to the high value addition and get some products to the market. Now this route is not easy. As you can see above, that's the normal route using high, synthetic, high cost synthetic materials but we follow the waste route, which is circuitous, but we try to smoothen it out using different techniques, pretreatment as well as fermentation to increase nutrient stability. And next, I move on to some examples. The first example, Canada is a, is a forest resource country, uh, but what happens is this small little bug, spruce budworm, it could destroy these forests in one go, and we could we, it could lead to 20, uh, years of harvest loss. So what we do is we develop biopesticides to deal with this situation. And most of uh, the biopesticides that we have developed is from waste. And this is what it goes through. So the, the green jar is the industry standard and these are the waste derived uh, biopesticides. So we go through the regular techniques of biopesticide production. And these are some examples of uh, the commercially available biopesticides derived from waste. We have the ready to use liquid formulations as well as the powder formulations. And uh, when we are going through these biopesticide formulations, it's very important to prove their credibility, which is done using the measurement technique of bioassay, where we try to see how good we are uh, in killing the spruce budworm, especially destroying its midgut. So we go through an uh, arduous task of this bioassay to prove the credibility of the alternative biopesticides that we derive. The second example I'm talking about is a fungus. As you can see, this fungus can wrap around the pathogen, which can destroy agricultural crops, and it could break its defense mechanism. So we developed this fungi also derived from these wastes solely as fermentation substrates. What is important is that this fungus can do dual functions. We could increase the nutrient assimilation into the plants, because the fung fungi are known to have a panoply of enzymes which can enhance this action. So we are trying to work on these fungi. And next we will move on from here to the examples of different type of uh, these fungal formulations that we have developed. Some scanning electron microscope uh, pictures here. On the left top you can see uh, these are nano-coated seeds which have been used for agricultural applications. Down you see an emulsion formulation and here Right, uh, right top you see some solid formulations, you can see those spherical drops. And we have also moved to another scale that is using uh, these wastes. We have tried to develop platform chemicals which have been traditionally derived from petrochemicals. The, the important part of it is that we have been also using the eggshells as uh, in order to develop biofilm systems. Now, where, where is it all done? We are fortunate at INRS to have uh, an excellent platform for pilot scaling. So we go all the way down from the test tube, as I said, until the final fermentation scale, formulation, 
and go in for a field application. So <clears throat> now I move on to the next research theme, which is, which is on emerging contaminants. What do we do? We get down to these wastewater treatment plants. This is a plan of a typical wastewater treatment plant. Get the samples and analyze those emerging contaminants at nanograms and picograms per liter. And now, after we have done this, we also need to study different mechanisms. So this is a typical mechanism that we study, an example of an emerging contaminant, because you know the wastewater treatment plant gets all sort of things. Those black dots represent the metals, and the metals and the contaminants can complex and lead to some persistent complexes, which could even further destroy the environment. Another thing which we do when we study these emerging contaminants is we, instead of following the classical approach, which you can see on the top, that is in, equal, in and out, instead of that, we are interested in what happens to the 99% of the contaminant that stays in the reactor because it could go to some other byproducts. And for doing this, we are developing some advanced, uh, this is an enzyme biochar system which could help uh, in degrading these contaminants, and it could be retrofitted into the existing wastewater treatment plants. And uh, what I would say is this research is really going in an excellent direction, and I'm really fortunate to have a very dedicated research team, and I would also like to thank my research funding partners. And I also take equally the opportunity to thank RSC for bringing me here, and especially Helen and Amelia who've been bearing with so many emails from our side, even for the session as well as Pecha Kucha. Thank you. Yes, with some of the work on the budworm, have you been yeah. working on the basis of what old Vlad <coughs> Vladimir Smirnov yeah, started yeah, yeah, doing yeah, yeah. 30 years ago? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, he is a crazy yeah, Russian. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um. I I'm, and I'm fortunate, Jeremy, to tell you that I'm working with one of his colleagues. He's retired now from NRC. Jose Valero, and they, they work together, but he's a nice chap to work with. So, yeah, you're right. He had this whole idea of using waste way back then, and everybody said, yeah. you're nuts. Even by Which is great, yeah, so it's yeah. great. Yeah. Chicken guts, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Yes, Eric. Yes. Uh, so, just out of personal interest, so do you also find plastics in the wastewater treatment plants? Yeah, and we study pallets. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I asked you that question: Do they leach out from the plastics? Yeah, yeah. we study pallets and uh, we try to uh, because we are more into the degradation. You know, because we try to develop systems which could retrofit, because yeah. we cannot add an extra process to the wastewater treatment plant. Yes, I'm studying specifically uh, the thalate class. Okay. Well, we should yeah. talk much more about that. Yeah, sure. <laughs>